Oh. And we're live. We're live. We have one in the chat who we got. Oh, it's Mr. Jimmy York. Okay. That's the first stats came up. I don't understand that. Um, hello, Facebook user. <laughs> um, a weird start tonight, folks. Um, hi, Eric. How you doing? So tonight, guys, we are going to talk about Skin Walker Ranch. I bloody love this subject. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Facebook user. Um, if you could put a second name, that uh, first name even, that would be brilliant. So I don't know what's happening with Facebook tonight. Um, so tonight, folks, we're going to be talking about Skinwalker Ranch. Now, I don't know if many people have been watching the series because of the Skinwalker Ranch. Um, Ian said last week about me watching <laughs> Skinwalker Ranch. Um, <laughs> and he said, oh, it's Leslie. Hi, Leslie. How you doing? I don't know why you're coming up as Facebook user. I'm not getting that one. Hey, Nettie. Hey, Mark. Hey, Wayne. I don't know if I said hi, Wayne, but I'll just say hi, Wayne again. Um, so what happened was I thought I'd get a wee watch, and I was rather quite impressed um, with some of the things that we're actually on it. So tonight, guys, we're going to talk about Skinwalker Ranch itself and where it is today. Um, so the thing so, that caught my... So it's still in Utah. Yep. <laughs> um, i tell you what that really did catch my eye, and I was just telling you this before I came on. What really caught my eye about Skinwalker Ranch, and it's was when they had done an experiment and they took um, a helicopter up and we, obviously they were watching it on the radar and it was not shown on the radar when it got into a certain a point a the place. So I thought, that's quite weird. Maybe it's something to do with their tech. Right, you know how you sit there and try and debunk it in your head? Yeah. So then what I found interesting was when I think, now Ian, you might call me, call me around, is it was, were there something like 50,000? 50, 50, I think there was a certain, a certain range or a certain latitude up. Okay, it's um, five thousand feet up apparently. That's it. And strange things were happening inside the plane, and it was coming through the speaker of the walkie-talkie, and there was this really strange sound, and it was so as though I would describe it: somebody taking their claws and running it right down. A chalkboard that was that high pitched. No, it didn't happen any higher, oh. and it didn't happen any lower. It was just bang and smack in the middle of this bit. So then it it jumped back to obviously back to base, and what was happening in the base was that uh, that obviously they could hear their own voices yeah. and each of them took a turn to go outside and they could hear the person outside and I thought that was fucking ironic but then suddenly it all stopped I mean how do you even explain something like that now nah, it's a peculiar place because originally uh, Homestead 1 was having the people that lived there were having shadow figures, ghostly activity in their house, which, you know, paranormal investigators got interested in. And then, uh, of course, the skinwalker was sighted, and it wasn't just caught once, it was caught twice, but we're seeing a, uh, 
a figure of a man walking across the mesa, and then the sun it's on all fours and crawls off like a like a wolf. Um, that was caught twice. So then they started looking into it. I know a guy called Bigelow bought the place, and then the military spent year, ten years investigating it, to which they haven't uh, released any of their findings. But now, of course, uh, Brandon Fugel's bought the place, and he's got a team of some of the top scientists in there. Yeah. Uh, the experiments they're doing, I mean, they're getting some really surprising results, and it's just off, off the scale. Um, I'm going to quickly run through other comments. And there it says, Skinwalker's fascinating subject, without a doubt. Hey Eric, hey Bia, hey Roger. And it's asking, do you think there's something underground there? Yeah, they've 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 sort of found by Homestead too. They found something. It's about the size of a rug. It's about the shape of a rugby ball, uh, and it's it's about five hundred yards long, um, underneath the road by Homestead, uh, and in the Mesa. They've, they've drilled into the mess up and uh, they've hit something metal. And the metal flakes they got off of it, they actually gave to a specialist. And he said it's the same material that they use on the the, uh, the tiles for the space shuttle. And he said it's not, hey, two, it's not two metals that would naturally be put together. Um, Eric says there's supposed to be sightings of aliens too. Wayne says I'm intrigued to know what else was in that sealed golf room. I think what gets me the most as well, right, is see when they were doing, they had put, what was it, 45,000 gallons of water and this yeah. the water was getting soaked away. And I don't know where it went, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like, what the actual fuck? It's like, what the hell? Unless, of course, somebody's gone there and hosed it up. Yeah. How the fuck would you get away with missing that amount of water no, they, in such yeah. a quick succession? Well, the, the funny thing as well, I mean, with the, the, the cow mutilations, I mean, that happened yeah. for years and years before, and they actually had it happen. So they tried the experiment. They moved the, the body of the cow and put it up where they know that coyotes and all that come down, and they wouldn't touch it. Oh, I heard about this. Was that the one that sat there for a year and nobody would touch it, no other no cat, cat would go near it? And they there must that. have been something, or they've seen something. But the thing was, when the cow, they actually had it on the, they caught it on camera, when the cow collapsed, there was a UFO right above it. And they actually... Oh, it. Well, that's what Wayne says. Nothing touched it, not even flies. What does that tell you when flies don't even want to touch it? Hey, William. Um, but it's, a, I mean, a really, really interesting subject. And it's like one of the ones that I definitely would love to explore without a shadow of a doubt because there is things there, excuse me, that is happening that you can't possibly debunk. Whether people and I know when it comes to shows, right? People can it's easy for people to say they manipulate it, they they do this, they do that, blah de blah de blah. But from the episodes that I've been watching, it's going to have to take some fucking debunking yeah. to actually, some reasoning or some sort of putting it on, you know, to, to I mean, that water thing, that water thing just totally blows my mind. Because you say to yourself, how can 45,000 gallons of water just disappear nearly exactly. without a tree. I mean the cow you know, well, when the cow the cow separated itself from the herd and went to the corner of the field 
none of the rest of the herd would go anywhere near it. And this was before it died. That's and, crazy. Uh, and then it just suddenly collapsed. And so they were out there like a shot as soon as they realised it collapsed. Um, and apparently organs have been removed from it, but without any real incision. But nobody, hey, Alex. But nobody had been near it, so they don't. They have no explanation. They got a guy uh, who used to be the sheriff mm -hmm. back in the days when the original family used to phone up and say we've had mutilations, and he turned around and said that's exactly the same as how they were getting them. Mm -hmm. the same. I, how? I mean, Terry Sherman. Sherman, sorry. It said that he got so spooked by the happenings on Skinwalker Ranch um, on his new cattle that had been there for 18 months. Um, after moving his, obviously, his family uh, forth to the property. Um, can you, I mean, he sold the, the 512 acre parcel away. And I mean, they, he's even saying that they had obviously had chilling experiences at Skywalker Ranch. Um, they've seen mysterious things such as crop circles, um, UFOs, the mutilation of, of cattle, you know, and it's not just the mutilation of cattle. I mean, okay, fair dues. No one wants to see that. But what I think really stood out for Terry was the way it was done because it was oddly surgical and bloodless manner. And yeah. I, I've heard a few things about, obviously, cattle um, and Skinwalker Ranch being mutilated, but there's no inch of blood left at all. No. And, and no it just blood. makes you think, oh, shit. No blood on the ground either. It's just crazy. Um, Cliff. Was there not something about how the cows died, i.e. how they were cut? Yeah, it it was not any surgical way that would have been done here. You know, not anything a vet would have done or anything like that or somebody with any knowledge. It was basically minimal hole, less, as less damage as possible and organs missing, which... You know, it's like doing keyhole surgery with that. But they had the cow on camera the whole time. Nothing went near it. So. It was, it's just, it's a really, really interesting subject to Skinwalker Ranch, definitely. Um, and it says perhaps the images of Skinwalkers could be a protective mark mechanism to protect what is underground and scare people away from it but what exactly is it or what is underneath that place there was a guy on it um, who actually when they were sitting around the briefing room I think he was a really older guy, can't even remember his name but, but he referred to it as it like when he was talking about it it was it and what he said was it was basically on its term, like if it wanted to show you, no show you, if it didn't want to show you, it would cause havoc with your, with your machines. If it wanted to show you, and I'm intrigued, and I suppose I can get why it's called it, it. Yeah. Because you don't know what it is. But obviously, you respected. Yeah, I mean, right on top of the mesa, which is the mountain part, there, hey, is, Linda. there is a swirling symbol. And when they asked the Native Americans mm -hmm. what that was, that's the Native, Native American symbol for a portal. Oh, well, it, it does look like a portal. If you're referring to the stone that it's printed on, it does really does look like a portal. I like because it was funny. He actually put it on, and it was one of the things that I had caught sight of. I was like, that that does look like a portal, the way it's shaped and everything. 
Good evening, Terry Two Billies. <laughs> He's got that name. That that name is Stain. Um, but let's look at this. Obviously, criticism. There's you get it for the paranormal, and you're going to get it for something like Skinwalker Ranch. So you've got a sceptical author called Robert um, Schiffer, and he believes that the Skinwalker Ranch is nothing more than a complete illusion, um, given that the NID site found no proof after several years of monitoring and that the previous owners of the property who'd lived there for 60 years say that no supernatural events of any kind had happened there. But here, that this is where I'm going to flip it, right? So the, the people that lived there for 60 years, right, you know what it's like if you report anything back then in America of you seeing such things as, yep, as you see, I've seen a UFO, this has happened to me, I've seen two grey men standing out my back door. You're obviously going to get a for the men in black and told if you don't if you say anything, you're you're getting taken away to the back of Nevada. You know, it's it's like they've what he's got to understand is there's been many cases where people have tried to report those many years ago and there is people who have appeared at their doors or have like look at the people that have tried to come out talking about Area 51 um, and they've suddenly went missing nowadays it's more openly spoke about because you just have to look what happened in America when they had that big meeting about the UFOs and how open they were. Well, I say open. I believe there's a lot more to it than being open. But, Kim, I mean, I can understand somebody being scared. But that's not really a reason to base it on. That just because somebody says 60 years ago, says that there's no supernatural events, you've got to then... The argument I could say to this gentleman is, well, 60 years ago, think about it. Think about what era it was. Think about when all the people were coming out and were saying they were seeing this, that, and the next thing, what was happening. Can't I mean, base it off that one thing. I mean, to go against all sceptics at the moment, you've got the owner, Brandon Fugel, who is a total billion, multi-billionaire, who's he's definitely not short of any money whatsoever. Mm. He has got the best guys he can get his hands on. And Travis, unbeknown to them until recently, was actually working for the Pentagon to do with UAPs. But he's got the best guys there. Any experiment they want to do, he says go ahead and do it and pays for it. Uh -huh. And every time they do a new experiment, they get UFOs appearing. They've got they've got cameras everywhere. They've got um the the unit that picks up any aircraft in the area, any transponders on any plane that's anywhere near the ranch. They're getting all these UA UAPs <laughs> and it's not aircrafts. So what is it? That as soon as they do something, one appears and then it suddenly yeah. disappears. Nah, nah. So, you know, it's not like they're not doing everything they possibly can to try and prove what's happening. No, I know. And it says it's like something out Predator, perhaps this place is where they got the idea from. Do you know you made me want to go and watch that one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, Carla. <laughs> Some man, or Terry. That's right, everything was touched up. You better believe it was. The history behind the area predates yeah. modern residents. Even the Native, Americans. Yeah. the Native Americans have been saying for years there's something going on there. Alex says, you know me, I'm as skeptical as they come, but I think there's sufficient evidence to indicate there's something there. Personally, I think it's the crash to a 4 in the Mesa from millenniums ago. That's pretty... Uh... Yeah, I would say he possibly hit the nail on the head there. 
Yep. See, this is why I love Alex and having conversations with Alex and this and different things. Um, Wayne says the test they did at the beginning of Series 3 gave interesting results about above the triangle. Yeah. That's what, funny enough, but season I'm watching, there is also government overlooking the experiment. Sure, damn right there is. Yeah. Um, um, I think last but, week's episode, that came apparent. Uh, that, uh, oh! Hello, Nikki. Oh, You're all right. He, he, the, you, you talk about skinwalker and he walks right in the door. <laughs> what are you just shooting into the night, my boy? Um... <laughs> Mark says you need to look into the English skinwalker area in Yorkshire. Oh, I didn't know that. Some stuff of some the same sort of stuff going on. So I believe I only found it out about a few weeks ago. Maybe something you guys could look into for the future. Mm. Might be my love. And it says <laughs> maybe it's protected and they cannot get near it. Yeah. I yeah. think every, every time they try to drill in or they do something, automatically something appears, and it's almost like we've got you've got our attention. We're watching you, sort of thing. Right. It's like Nick. Yeah, suddenly when you drill in, you some appears. <laughs> so Nick, it's it's from not your area, but it's for your country. What's your thoughts on Skinwalker Ranch and the curses? Can Walker Ranch the TV series? See, you see, it's surprising. I haven't seen the the TV series just yet. I, I'm in try. I'm in Ooh, oh, necklace! I know. I got sent. I got sent to work it last week by that beggar there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um. No, it's just that. Um. Well, I, I, even though I haven't seen the series, I'm still planning on checking it out. But I have seen other documentaries revolving around Skinwalker Ranch. And honestly, I definitely think there's there's a lot of activity. I think really what a lot of people have been saying about the activity going, there, going on there, it's pretty legit. Because it's just, you know, that's, that's over there, that type of activity, cryptid, paranormal, UFO activity. That yeah. that's been going on forever, basically for who knows how long. So I'm I'm pretty much. I'll do worse. I'll degrade them to that basement. You'll be getting into that cupboard. Yeah, you'll, you'll be going in the sub basement, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Ian's been there a few times for his naughty behaviour. <laughs> hey, Bri. Um. There's been a lot of sightings of cryptids in the UK recently. Oh. Yeah, one of them in Glasgow called Lois. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday. Be nice to me, you prick. Spirits of the land playing with humans. Yeah, it's my mind thinking. Yep. So yeah, I mean, have you ever? Have you ever known somebody Nick, that's been there that's gave you an experience? Say what they've had. Surprisingly, no, I haven't. I haven't met anyone. Although I, I've spoken to a lot of investigators that truly would love to go and investigate there. Mm -hmm. The only problem, the only problem is, as of right now, I mean, I think they're still trying to make some kind of negotiations. I know, of course, a lot of the reservations throughout Skinwalker Ranch obviously are probably property areas, so you probably probably really won't have enough space if you want to really investigate but i'm sure there's certain public areas that you can go out and do some type of investigation at so yeah i don't know if anybody has ever really had an experience other than what i've seen on tv but like i said there's a number of invest other investigators that would love to go and, and investigate it yeah definitely it's You've got to watch the TV show, Nick, because the stuff they've been doing of late, because Brandon's not short of money, and he yeah. just throw, throws it at them and says, just do it. I know. And <laughs> the results they've got are unbelievable. I know. Bye, you, know what, you know what? Matter of fact, because I don't really have much going on this weekend. Maybe I'll try watching it this weekend. Yeah, take it, devil. Marcus, don't you join up with Ian and his naughty behaviour? <laughs> um, I I think the thing is, um, 
it is one of the interesting ones. You should watch it, Nick, right? Because as I said, that, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, I was saying, yeah, come to think of it, and I don't think I have much going on this weekend, so I might be able to watch it this weekend. Right, well, I'm not giving you a phone call because I don't want to distract your learning curve. Why do you need to phone him when he's only in the basement? <laughs> because I like to make him feel special when I pick up the phone and I, I say, bring, bring, Nick, are you there? And he goes, yeah, thank you for everything that you do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the interesting things that's come out of uh, all these experiments you're doing, they notice the frequency that is appearing and it's one point, is it, is it one point six gigahertz? Yeah. And they looked into it. No, nothing. No radios. Nothing transmits on that frequency on the planet. So when they replicated it, they replicated it through a local radio show, and all hell broke loose. I, I watched that. I watched that. That was really. In fact, see, just before I came on, that was the episode I was on. And I did notice that a lot of them, when they're working on, um, when they are doing um, work on whatever they're trying to do, I notice it seems to be a 1.6 frequency. Yeah. Every time they do an experiment, that frequency comes up and it comes from nowhere. And uh, as I've noticed, uh, Annette said in the chat, that people have become ill. One of the guys, his brain swelled up. Uh, yeah, that that yeah, was crazy. And that's, the funny thing was, nice. they had another guy uh, in the first series when they they got him to do an experiment, and he started to suffer from it as well. But the they, radiation was it the radiation? But no, said, I'm thinking. Yeah, they, they they didn't know what it was. They didn't know if it was radiation. But then they've they've come across this frequency, and perhaps those two people are very susceptible to that frequency. That's crazy. They're really being cheeky. Well, seeing you're noticing, they're being very cheeky tonight. The basement, they were getting cold water thrown at them. Um, Alex says there was a spiritual experiment with Native Indians from different tribes. Their drumming and chants donates at a frequency that potentially could have opened a portal, but the scientific data was very, very interesting. Well, it was very interesting. Yeah. All the data yeah. they've got has been very interesting. There. Yeah. Sensitivity to magnet field. It really is interesting. I would recommend MD um, to watch. Um, <laughs> Cliff says that you're not allowed in that because we need you for the channel. Don't you worry. I, I've been prodding them with a big stick. For Thursdays and Fridays, don't you worry, Cliff. He's not getting off with no appearing. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely something. I mean, everybody knows how I feel about both shows, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I thought I wouldn't like it because I thought it was going to be kind of doing the same sort of route. But I was mistaken and proved wrong. It was, it was actually really, really good. Really good. It's definitely I mean, worth it. Travis is one of the top aeronautical guys on the planet. And he he went in there as a sceptic. And he's like, there's definitely something going on here. Yeah. It's convinced, well, really, yeah. It's convinced him so much that they gave him a job at the Pentagon. He's only just revealed that to the people at Skidwalker Ranch because he couldn't tell them. But he revealed <laughs> last week he said they, I was actually working for the Pentagon while I was here. So, Ian, what episode are you on? I'm on the latest one. Season four? I'm up to date, girl, you know. Up to date. Well, shut your... Shut your mouth. Yeah. I'm not up to you yet. You'll be watching series two with the aliens would have invaded and taken us all away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're, oh my God. See you. 
you're, you're like that guy that would sit at a cinema and if somebody was watching a film, you'd be like, this is what happens at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, don't you encourage them? See, some of us keep up to date. Stop running in the field if you don't know what's happening. Come on. Um, but yeah, definitely get a watch, Nick. Definitely, he's actually signed up to. I think it was um, history or something, so he could get to watch them all. And um, because Prime didn't actually have them. You had to sign up to history or something like that um, to get the free channel. So that'll be my weekend spent. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it would definitely, I, I think it would, I mean, like I said, it, uh, other than work, I should have the time to to, to do uh, check out the show. So I think I think it would definitely be worth checking out. See I mean, if you be. It would be interesting for, but perhaps I ought to, Perhaps I ought to email Brandon, but he needs to get paranormal investigators involved as well because there's definitely something something a bit weird going at Homestead too because I've seen figures there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that place has got like everything. Yeah, there's, there's every sort of thing going on there. So, I mean, if you want to cover the whole spectrum, you need investigators there. You need mediums there. You know, Alice is like me, 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 me. I'll go away <laughs> if I explain. Don't you worry, I'll be there to carry your bags. <laughs> Mark says the aliens won't take us to know that brave. Thank you, my darling. At least you know, he's trying to kiss my ass here. Oh my god, uh, Prime charge you to watch them. I see if you sign up for history, you get them for hee haw. Cliff says, well, worth researching about frequencies, vibrations, and magnetic field, I have a frequency generator. Ooh. Yeah, if he, want, if he wants to resonate the one point gigahertz frequency and see if it's a UFO turn up. Mm -hmm, true. Ali says, there's a lot of bags. It's okay. I'll carry them. Not a problem like a pro. <laughs> 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 There'll be a lot of bags and they'll all be full of iron brew. <laughs> <laughs> That's after me unpacking Alex's bags. To be fair, Alex has got quite a lot of equipment. He's honestly. Um, Cliff, Alex is asking what frequency generator do you have? Um, but no. It's a, it is a really interesting subject. Um, I must admit, I found myself more and more getting, and it must be hanging about with the Dark Mirror boys, but I'm finding myself more and more getting sucked into aliens um, and ufology and things like that. Well, I've always been in a frame of mind that it's all to do with uh, dimensions, the whole lot. I wouldn't be surprised if it is, so... It's it's very likely it could be the yeah. case. UFOs, cryptids, ghosts, the lot. It's all dimensions. Even the skinwalker itself. That's the skinwalkers that are said to uh, stalk the area. Of course, that's part of its name, obviously. Yeah, um, and then Glasgow has its own. Yeah. You just pointed. You just pointed to necklace instead I mean, of me, dumbass. <laughs> I wasn't sure why he was pointing at me for. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm pointing at you now. Then I'm pointing at Nicholas. <laughs> Don't, you give, that. Don't you give that middle for him. Yeah, we see the screen the opposite way around, don't we? Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. You're still pointing to him. All right. I am not listening. Um, <laughs> so here is a theory, right? And I want you everybody's opinions, right? But what do you think of geophysical processes causing the brain to hallucinate? Yeah, That's well, actually there's always question, that possibility, yeah. isn't there? But when you get so many people witnessing the same thing, 
I bet you're so fucking proud that I've actually come up with a theory. Yeah, well, that's sort of blown my mind that you actually knew something technical. <laughs> that's, what, that's why it took me a moment to answer because I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd expect it to come in next place, not me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> Expect the unexpected battle. Yeah, I'm just thinking, where did you just read that from? Yeah, <laughs> I'm no telling you, fuck all, son. Hey, your iPad there. <laughs> <laughs> takes you back to the, the days when you're doing tests and you try to make yourself look intelligent. <laughs> Don't worry, that's just not working. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I'm never talking about him, Blue. But uh, the amount of experiences that are collaborated by a lot of people, I mean, if you're being affected by that sort of thing, you wouldn't hallucinate the same things. No, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. it, it's fair enough that one person might, or a couple, but when you've got several people at different times witnessing the same things, it doesn't really make much sense because when you hallucinate something, it's usually in your subconscious anyway. Right. Oh, I couldn't tell you what I'm hallucinating, but battle. I think you'd hallucinate about it's just been mind bending. That would. <laughs> <laughs> Alex says hi. I am blue. Cliff says warning. There are frequencies that can kill you. Um, Alex says, indeed, very harmful. And it says, you can imagine with energies, there are multiple time zones and dimensions could be all playing at once. Yeah, that's very Hi, true. Ian. Don't give that him a thumbs up. Give him a middle finger. Cliff, I've got... <laughs> I've got a uh, play store that does work well. It used to be a high... Got a play store. God help us all. <laughs> Uh, Mark says found it from season two on History Channel. I already told you that, you dildo. <laughs> and it says could be a pyramid underneath like there has been never mentioned under the sea, the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, well, what they found under the Mesa, whatever it is, it's curved. Because as soon as they put the drill in, it bends up like that. That's crazy. That is pretty mental. And they've managed to scrape off the metal. It's like really thin sheets like that. And it's two different metals that wouldn't naturally occur together. But when they took it to a specialist, he said that's the same material they use in tiles on the space shuttle. Really? So, and how is that in the mess? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's definitely. I mean, there's a lot to come out about Skinwalker Ranch. Mind you, there's a lot to come out about everything, I guess. About the whole UFO, was about cryptids, the full show lot. I think there's a lot to come out. Um, if you had to take one person to go with you to Skinwalker Ranch, who would you take? Oh, you my mate Don Phillips, I think. But he's already in America, so I wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to drag him for all, would I? What about you, Nicholas? <laughs> oh, my God. That would be a tough choice. Uh, who would I bring to Skinwalker Ranch to investigate with? <laughs> I, you know what? Honestly, I'm just going to have to say it. It would yeah. probably be, have to be somebody on this network, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. You know, Nick, he wants you to say Lois. <laughs> do you know see do you know what Alex do you know what Alex always taught me? And Alex will laugh at this one. Alex always taught me to have a trigger object. If you want to bring something out, have a trigger object. Now I thought, do you know what? I can always remember Alex having the Buddha 
and I'm always thinking to myself, that's always good to have a trigger object. See, it's going to walk around. See if I had to have a trigger object, I'd tell that prick down at the bottom, yeah, to go and run round, just to see if he could pull out a skin walk. <laughs> 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 He'd definitely be my trigger object. Yeah, no, oh, I just realised something. And I'd bring him to meet you, Lois. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? If you think about it too, by the way, you know, like, let's say if I decide to choose Lois in this case, it may not be North Carolina, but it will still be Skinwalker Ranch, though. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm up for North Carolina. <laughs> Alice is laughing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we need someone to go down in a hole in the mess up, Lois. <laughs> <laughs> I am not being your trigger object, Barrel. <laughs> Yeah, but you're skinny enough to get in the hole they found in the mess. <laughs> Who told you I was skinny? <laughs> uh, I've, I've got a fast, and it says I'd take someone who could not run faster than me. That would be Barrow then. I wouldn't take Lois' skin. I thought that said skin, skin wankers. Skin wankers. <laughs> That's yeah. what I thought. It's, that's the way. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Mark, what is me for this? <laughs> yeah, she's thirty-five and now needs her eyes tested. <laughs> Does that not look like he just said skin wankers? No, I said skin, skin walkers. Walkers. Sorry. <laughs> I do apologise there. Um, I'll go down the list. That's no way to talk about Ian. Oh, sorry. He didn't say your name. Sorry, I, I must, must have misread it again. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just one of those ones. Um, I'm actually... Da -da 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 -da. I think we've got a we've got a guest for next week. I've just realised I'll actually need to message um, to see if we're all good for next week. We have got a guest. Oh, there's Chantel. There's no He's way that I, I can do dance singing, but I'll just say the hello. Oh, see if you guys didn't see. Um, was it last week's show that I did with Wayne and my voice broke halfway through? Oh, oh I'm, you mean I missed that? Oh. Oh, my <laughs> God. We were on a live and my voice just went kaput. Oh, just that. halfway. In fact, it was Tuesday's show. We oh, were doing party. We, oh, we were doing party unity. I'm and, that and I'm going to remix it. <laughs> oh my god, my voice just broke. It got what do you mean? It was so peaceful, you gob shite. <laughs> um it was actually that bad that I had I couldn't read the comments. I literally had to bring them up on the screen. You can't read and them I couldn't read them. You can't read them. <laughs> Mastered super wankers, skin wankers even. <laughs> that's what he did, right? See, that's what his translation was. It's not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so Tuesday we were doing Party Unity and my voice just went. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my voice like. Before you work, work. <laughs> well, what can I say? It was awesome. It was like, oh. <laughs> they were laughing at me, and I've tried to, do you know, I tried to down as much iron brew as I could so that it could, like, wet my voice again, and it would go back up, but did it fuck? It made it ten times worse. <laughs> you don't want gassy drinks when your voice is gone, trust me. Uh, oh, so funny, you've got me crying and laughing again. Uh, As, and do you know what the best thing was? I was sitting on the live going... My boys have dropped. That's a sign there. 
And then I was saying to Jamie how I liked his beer. I like his goatee. And uh, who was it? Eric said about not having much. And I said, yeah, well, look at mine. Mine looks pristine. Oh, it was hilarious. Usual Tuesday night. Hilarious. Um, <laughs> far away from having that, that tash, girl. Yeah. A few more years. That's, you th that's because you think that I'm a certain German one. Well, you might say you're 35, but we know you're a lot older. <laughs> Linda, I give you full permission to hit him. I will kid on that no one's seen it. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> over there doing gold work. The triple expert. I, 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 I was actually just going to say to you, Alex, is that some porno that I've not seen before? <laughs> Uh, triple X, that's Vin Diesel. Oh, man. Well, oh, wait, you know what? Because that's why I like my German. A better way to say this. this is more than just triple X, Alex. This is quadruple X. <laughs> <laughs> Eric says, but that's why I like my German girls. They're so hairy. <laughs> right, Eric? <laughs> oh, wow. My guilty wow. conscience. Wow. I'm this is, gonna, this you know, I am not going to touch that one. Absolutely not. Whatever flow should board with in. Do you know that? Do you know this is steering right off the bridge? I think we've hit the. <laughs> oh, wow. I believe Mark. He started all this. He said skin man. <laughs> I blame him. I blame him. No, you felt it. You said it wrong. You started it. <laughs> you just like to blame me. See if the sky turned grey, you'd blame me. That'd be your fault, yeah, exactly. You're a demon. <laughs> Can't it be your fault? Who tell me that? I am? <laughs> I'm an angel. Yeah, right. Got <laughs> <laughs> your face. That explains the dent then from when you fell. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe after the crop circles is just when I fail for having <laughs> that's when you're looking for your eyebrow you dropped <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with a bit of hair keeps you warm in the wind now you tell them the, the wind with the iron brew is awful I can smell it down here halo strangler don't be on their side, Alex. <laughs> don't encourage them. To. They don't need encouraging. Um, so next week, guys, we have Dark Phoenix Paranormal um, coming on, but I need to double make sure it's still going ahead. Um, I am buzzing for the 13th of October because I have Chrissy Walker coming on from Entering the Paranormal Dude, Unknown. Oh my God, I, yes, have not, uh, I have not spoken to her like face to face in like three years. Yes, she's coming on oh, no. on Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> friend. <laughs> what did you say you dropped it? I didn't hear that. What did you say? I said, all I can say, Nick, is you should be a better friend if you hadn't spoken to her for three years. I know. You're a bad boy. Um, but I, I really can't wait for Chrissy to come on. Honest to God, when I asked her and she said this, I was like, ah, yay. And then I said, I, I gave her a date to pick. And she was like, that Friday the 13th. And I was like, we'll go for that one then. Yep, I, why, why am I not surprised with her? <laughs> and you know what? Believe it yeah. or not, uh, I can guarantee I can guarantee she's probably going to call me this when uh, when she's on the show. There's another nickname out there that a past funny nickname of mine that he, that she called me from a different podcast. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to ruin the surprise. You guys will just have to wait until that show. So <laughs> if you guys can guess. <laughs> You guys are gonna. You guys will probably guess all you want. What, what is it? I don't know. You got to. You guys got to tell me. <laughs> to us, Nick, you're just Woody. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
Is that Notorious D-I-C-K? No, it's not that one. It's not that. This 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 nickname predates all of those crazy nicknames. Uh. <laughs> well, you know who I'm messaging after the show? I'm going to speak to Christy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I we've got a a really jam packed until January. Oh, so really? we have we've got quite yeah, got quite a few coming on. Who else have we got coming on this year? Uh, Barry John. Yeah. We're getting Barry John. We're getting Greg. Greg's coming on in November. Greg who? I can't pronounce his second name. The guy that does all the radio shows radio shows five days a week. Oh, wait, Greg Backen? Yeah. Oh, really? Because <laughs> we just had him on Supernatural Talk like two weeks ago. You stop stalking my... <laughs> oh, don't worry. I probably <laughs> not stalking. <laughs> um, who else? Talking of me, didn't know you were having him. <laughs> <laughs> or is it you that's stalking our shows? <laughs> well... Uh, you you know you know this chickadee needs yeah. to know. Um, we are also getting back on Ian White. Um, we're getting Ian White. Um, we are getting a gentleman called Darren Dykehouse. Oh, I do. You know, I know that guy too. <laughs> and it was not actually on any of the shows that I've done. It was actually with that guy. Oh, actually, no. They'll be chatting your door, Alex. <laughs> when, we had, um, when we had Joe on for uh, the Jonestown Massacre on to the Grave Act, remember Joe? Uh huh. He, as you know, he does a show of his own. He was looking for a, uh, he was looking for an additional co-host because his usual co-host that he usually has on wasn't able to do it one Friday night. So he called me up and he asked. Hey, Duan. He called me up and he uh, asked me if I wanted to help him out with the show tonight. And the guest that they chose too was Darren Dykehouse. <laughs> oh wow! Um, do you know? I actually, how I got in contact with Darren was um, he. I don't know if it was him personally. I need to ask him, but I don't know if it was him personally or somebody that he got, but to do the terrifier mask. Oh really? Oh yeah, the terrifier mask. Yep, I know. That. Yeah. Um, and I thought that looks pretty fucking cool. So, like, hang with blah blah blah, and they went backwards and forwards. And I just thought, why no, like, have them on? So, I asked them, and they said, Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, it'll be we're pretty filled, but I'm looking forward to having Barry John. I feel my Barry John is a really, really good guy and a really, really cracking yeah. medium, yeah. I've had, I've been read by Barry John and he blew me away. That's no hard. Oh. Hello, Ian, darling. <laughs> um, I like to say, life. She realised how close my relatives are to you. <laughs> oh I wonder God. who you're going to send my way. Man, you guys are killing me. <laughs> it wouldn't happen to be Mr. C, would it? Mr. C? Cowley? Oh, not him. No, I meant my family. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you die on me tonight? <laughs> You'd come and haunt me. I would not be able to stand over you with a crucifix actually eradicating your mortal soul if I was dead. I could stick it out. Uh, I, that's wrong. You know what I mean. <laughs> That came out too fast. That really went dead. <laughs> that was one of those ones that we didn't know. Think. Stop. Reverse. Come on, Yes. Put bright.
brain into gear, then open. <laughs> <laughs> I can learn to learn today. We stay at this team. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that one, Alex. That's oh, hilarious. <laughs> oh, my guilty conscience. In fact, Alex, we'll need to get you on a show. Definitely. Please come oh, on. Yeah, that's going to be one. That is truly going to be one hell of a show if, he's, if he pr- brings up all these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be sorry. It's funny. Listen, this is a highlight of your show. This is what we talk. Don't worry about it. We we do this pretty much with almost every show we got on these networks. So it's not like yeah. it's just completely restricted to just this show. Oh, believe me, as they crucify crucifix and oh. um, would stay on fire within seconds, cheeky cunt. Yeah. Oh my god, I gotta just tell you guys real quick. This was anyway. You guys, it would be well. you talk about funny, crazy moments. When I was doing supernatural talk last night with Jeremy, Adrian, and Eileen, they, um, they, uh, I, and Kate was on too with us. So I was on my other computer, my desktop, as I would usually call the main studio. And then all of a sudden, the screen went black and it said no signal. And I actually start swearing, swearing a little bit. I'm like, oh, no, because I don't know what happened. It, I was so frustrated. And next thing you know, here's the funny part. All of a sudden, the screen goes, the screen comes back on. And I originally thought maybe it was like restarting, but it came back on. And next thing you know, I have everybody in the studio staring at me like, Nick, what the hell? <laughs> I can I can I can imagine Nick sitting in the background going, see this Joanne fucking knows. thing, this fucking I thing's not working. Joanne would know because she she was watching that last night. Were you oh jo- my I gotta ask Joanne? Were, were you there when that happened? <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you know they caught the cat? Oh, the, oh wait, no, no, this is actually serious. Uh, oh, I love that. Nick was still laughing at that comment, you naughty boy. I didn't fully read it until now, but that okay, good. They did kill this. I mean, they did capture this guy. There was uh, to kind of be on a more serious case. Um, Adrian, she got a uh, she got what was known as a blue alert. And we weren't really sure what a blue alert really was at first. But after we heard from her husband, Zach, what it was, it turned out it was somebody that killed a police officer. So at that time last night, they, he, whoever it was was on the run. But according to Joanne now, they said they finally caught him. So that's good. Good. I'm glad they got him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it could be good to chat with you guys all later on. Definitely, I would sleep with me and I've seen your date, love. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, um, oh, I'm sorry, Jordan. Again, I didn't. I, I thought you said, did you know they, they call? I'm sorry. No, I, I don't. Okay, I guess maybe they have. No, they, I don't know just yet. I'll have to find um, I'll look it up after I get off here. Uh, yeah. It's so... Walk, yeah. for YouTube channel, maybe. Yeah. Oh, there's you say that there's a guy on the uh, YouTube called Paranormal Fake. Now, Paranormal Fake, really? He's worth going to watch. Uh, many people in the UK will know the medium he's taking the Mickey out of. Really? Yeah. That is me, your friend, Mitchell friend. Does it? It's doing it. No, no, no. This guy's been around for a while, ever since a certain, let's just say, proclaimed medium who did YouTube lives uh, was coming out with all this rubbish stuff and saying that he... His, How wife, it, his wife had kicked him out and he was living in the car and things like that, you know. This guy started doing this paranormal fake and it's all based on him. It's hilarious. Oh, my God. You need to send me the name, Ian. Just look up paranormal fake on YouTube. No, the medium, you dumbass. <laughs> I think you'll guess because I think he says his name a few times. I'm actually going to And next like that, I'm, I'm Googling, you know. It says that I'm either that or he's, he's 
he's googling what wood he's visiting this week for dogging. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he does spend a lot of time in the woods. <laughs> no, no, I actually haven't, believe it or not. <laughs> it's more of the cornfields. Well. If you go down to the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this show is terrible. And no, well, that no. There is what actually. Is know, Nick, is, does corn chafe? <laughs> I may not go and ask. Uh, neither am I. But I actually do have something I would like to present real quick before before we end the show. Um, Joanne probably believe it or not, it's it's a video that I like to present. It's Joanne. Oh no, 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 no. I don't need to see what happens in the woods. No. <laughs> No, it's not with the woods. <laughs> All right, mate. Okay. Sorry, brother. Sure. Well, no, I'm just going to say real quick. It's it's just a 30-second video. Um, It's for that new series I'm trying to put together, that Scary Stories preview. Joanne probably saw it last night. I'm trying to present it for each of the shows so everybody can have a chance of checking it out themselves. So, Joanne, I'm sorry if you had to see this again, but... I don't have a specific date yet when, this, when I'm going to start this series. Now, just remember, this series I'm going to be uh, broadcasting on these networks. This, this is unlike the other shows. This, this is not one that's going to be like broadcasting live myself. These will be pre-recorded shows, and it's just going to be a season. <laughs> <laughs> Show, wait, what? Show you where the bear sheds. <laughs> what the hell is that? What the hell is that? <laughs> at the edge of the woods <laughs> <laughs> but anyways yeah here's here's the uh video i really hope you guys like it. it's actually it's actually meant to be both kind of really creepy and funny so <laughs> uh, you guys oh, i love you alex that makes me laugh right here, let's go all right here we go I'm Scary too. Stories host would like to apologize in advance for scaring you to death this fall. He also would like to apologize for everlasting nightmares, unexpected laughs, and constant paranoia, but that is such another issue. Scary Stories presented in the dark, coming this October to several paranormal networks. Do you know something? I recognise the dude in the the picture. Exactly. I recognise him. Uh -huh, I did recognise him. Yeah, exactly. He had an he, he had an uncanny look alike, you know. Yeah. So, do you do me a favour? Turn your head to the left and you know, to see that nose and the facial. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, I was going to say, it has an uncanny look-alike. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get at uh, Alex. Because Alex, Alex Coleman. Because it Ian Tom Sidney. Yeah, I, I think that's an uncanny look-alike as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sinister, I like it. Do you know... Guys, when I was in Alex's team, do you know, he showed me this, um, it was a, like what Nick just done there, but his own, and it was really, really good. I really loved that, Alex, I still think about that, actually, that one that was so creepy, it was actually really creepy, and it's one of the ones that just, you get drawn into. But yeah, I like that. Not definitely, without a doubt. Um, is that for your spooky stories that are coming out? The ones that we done. Yeah, it is. awesome. And I'm actually awesome. I'm actually presenting like all of them. In fact, in addition to the new one that we're working on, I got the audio books ready. I got the audio books ready for this book, which is Tales from Valley View Cemetery. I got awesome. the audio books ready for these two, which is. 
hold on one second. Let me turn off the green screen because it's uh it's it's blocking out the books. So this way you guys can see. You can't see. Yeah, uh, so you know what? Let me actually put this on. area fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this solo way out so everybody can see it a little bit better. So I got the audio book ready for this one, uh, Tales from Valley View Cemetery. And, of course, you'll recognize this one, Lois. Looks of the first Nightmare Series. Yay! And then also the audio book for my very first audio book I ever did, which was Corpse Cult, New American Folklore. And finally, well, not necessarily finally, also the audio book stories for the movie version of book of scary stories to tell in the dark but if that's not enough i don't have them with me right now but i'm also going to be presenting the original audio books i mean the audio books for the original scary stories trilogy in fact they're going to be the first ones i'll be presenting obviously because they're the ones that got it all started and also hopefully if we get this if we get this current audio book done um for Nightmare Soup 3 Midnight Snack along with an additional audio book. I'm hoping to have those ready to go. So it's going to be like a whole marathon of like different, excuse me, it's going to be like a whole marathon of different audio, like uh, scary stories. I mean, do, I, do me yeah. a favor, Nick. Yeah. Are you, do you know where MD, can you tell people where they'll find these, obviously the books and yeah. that? So a lot of these books, for the most part, you can find most of them like on Amazon. Although the only one that I have that I just present, there's only one book that you won't be able to get anymore, at least in in a physical form. And this is actually the Nightmare Soup sketchbook. They only release a limited amount of these. So unfortunately, they no longer sell these in physical form. You can only get them as PDFs. But mm -hmm. aside from that one, the other books you can get them on Amazon or you can get them on either cemeterygatesmedia.com or nightmaresoup.com. And also, as far as, as other audiobooks, aside from our work, and also, like I said, the audiobooks of the original trilogy, I also had received permission from some of the authors to have, if they had audiobooks already made for their respective books, they already got permission to broadcast those. On hey, Carl. Hey, Carl, good to see you. So there it, it's it's gonna be great. I really can't wait to broadcast this. It's gonna be a lot of scares, even a few laughs. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be great. So it's it's really truly a put it this way, it's kind of more like a uh kind of it it's beneficial in a way. It will help keep these networks running when there are no shows that are in progress. Hey Lauren, I just want to say my thoughts right now are for you, Lauren, and I hope that you're she sent me she sent us a update about her sister-in-law. So, yeah. Um, um I, I, I'm I, I, I'd rather have her speak for speak for herself. And Joanne, to answer your question, those stories most of the stories are not true, but there are some that, that are. And, and in some cases, even if some of these stories are not true. They are sometimes based on classic urban legends, like, for example, the Vanishing Hitchhiker stories. Right. I must admit, mine was based on a true life story, so I liked that one. I was like, woohoo, I'll pick the right one. Yeah. But yeah but it's definitely. Nice, it's going to be a true marath marathon of them. Like I said, they'll be, they'll be broadcasting at times when no shows are in progress. So, again, it's beneficial. It helps keep these networks running and it was, in fact, an idea we had from a guest that we had on a show a few months ago. She asked me, saying, do you ever consider broadcasting these stories? And it's, it, jo and Jeremy was with me on that show, too. And we kind of looked at each other saying, you know what? That's not a bad idea. So it's like a commercial break, you know, to keep things going. Definitely. Well, on Monday, you have those two mad ones from the dark mirror show if you love aliens go and check the guys out um on tuesday i'll be back with the simple spooky show um don't ask me the subject because i've forgotten wednesday i'm going down uh, nothing unusual then. <laughs> wednesday you will have necklace on the Nick Files, and you will have very long. Um, Thursday, we will be back. Um, 
do you know what thursday we will be back with the two crime show is doing good she's in hospital oh my god i'm i'm really happy more than that i'm really really happy Oh, Cliff um, just said he's just read about the serial killer, Mary Bell. Well, I know who Mary well is. do you know, funny, funny enough, they, she, I was she, she lives in my hometown. What now? Well, funny enough, I don't know if, Nick, did you and Winetta pick Winetta? He's got to kick my ass. <laughs> did you and Wayne pick a subject for next week's show? You know, we, we actually did not. We were hoping that we talked to you. Oh, I think I, I heard the British last night. Yeah, it went really well, to be honest. Yeah. We went for like two um, hours. Yeah, he told me. I I said to him the food bug, and I was like, you didn't need to do it to full two hours. That's just a, a window for how long we've got. We had such a really good conversation yesterday. See? You don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Cliff has obviously came up with Mary Bell, and it was one of the subjects I was thinking myself when I was researching, we'll do Mary Bell on Thursday. Is that the child killer? I think it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, she was a child, and she was a child killer. She lives in Hastings. Oh. Um, on Friday we will have the Dark Phoenix girls. If not, Wait, then no. we will have a subject. Actually, no, I just looked her up. No, she wasn't necessarily a serial killer, but she did murder two people when she was like ten or eleven. Yeah, that that's the one that basically killed the children. If it's the same one I'm thinking, and was laughing at the family. Yeah, she she wouldn't be considered really a serial killer because she only killed two kids. They always. I think. I think to be honest, it was, what's that? It was more her coldness, yeah, and the fact that she was mere taunt in the family. Um, yes, in but yes, that's what we're doing. There's your your week of simply spooky network. Um, but everybody have a good weekend and please stay safe whatever you're doing. And if you catch any skin wankers, please do let the show know. <laughs> what also most importantly, avoid going to the woods. <laughs> take, take, take it for a man that knows. <laughs> well, well, luckily he hasn't been in there while you have, so he's... Yeah. And yeah, Cliff, you're right. I, I didn't know about that for the UK, but yeah, in, US, in US in the US, yeah, they say to be classified as a serial killer, it's you have to kill three or more people. But yeah, I could see I can see you go and think about leave my skin uh, breakers low. <laughs> see what I'm going to put out there. Love you guys, right? Bye. See you guys, take care. <laughs>